Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Reesey News, and today I have a few things to cover. So first off, we have Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, which is a remaster of the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, and it's, it's pretty cool. So the original, if you don't know about it already, it came out 15 years ago on the GameCube, PS2, Xbox, and PC. And it was, um, it was a really good game for a Spongebob game that was developed by THQ. I didn't play that game, but I did play another game that was released around a similar time called, um, Spongebob The Yellow Avenger for the DS, made by the same developer. And this will be remastered, and it will be, um, made by THQ Nordic. And it's going to have HD graphics fully, like, remastered and remade. It looks really cool, like, the, um, the trailer, and I think there's a couple screenshots. But it's, it's pretty cool that we're getting a remaster of this game. A lot of people wanted it. And it's going to include, like, new modes, a new multiplayer mode. And it's going to include, like, some of the cut content that was cut from the original game. And this is, this is going to be a pretty cool game, and I'm definitely going to get it. So it's going to be coming to Nintendo Switch, which I have, and I'm probably going to get it for that. And it's also coming to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and PC. So yeah, that's pretty cool that we're getting a Spongebob game on new consoles now, and for Nintendo Switch. The only, like, Spongebob-related game on the Switch so far is that Nickelodeon Racing game, which kind of sucks. So, it's nice that we're getting a decent Spongebob game for the Switch, since Spongebob's amazing and really deserves more games, even though Spongebob already has a lot of games. So next up, we have Google Stadia, and this is what Little Juice has to say about it. So, as far as we saw, Google Stadia does not look good. I mean, like, with the press conference that Google had recently, um, pre-E3, and... It, it, I mean, the specs don't look bad. I mean, 10 megabits per second is the minimum, and that's 720p, which isn't too bad. Still 60 FPS, and then there's stereo. But, um, and then the best is, um... 35 megabits per second and then you get 4k and stuff like that i mean that's not that bad knowing that people have um decent internet these days with like usually being upward of 25 megabits per second and that's usually like the 4k range for google stadia but that that's not that bad the thing that is bad is it's it's with the phone function the phone abilities with this, it's only going to be able to work on Google Pixel. I mean, I understand that it's Google, and it's running on a Google device, but it's not even running on other Android-based software and um, hardware. It's only going to be able to work on Google Pixel, which is stupid, and it's going to require a constant internet connection. So, no downloads, as it said, which is really stupid, because, like, I mean, Nintendo Switch is kind of like passing this thing with portability. It's Nintendo Switch has better portability than this thing, and that that's really the way to go if you want like a portable game experience. You need to get the Nintendo Switch, not this Google Stadia, since like the Google Stadia, you're gonna need to have a hotspot, and it's gonna cost a lot of money. Oh, and another thing, it's gonna cost a lot of money. I mean, um, I think the service itself is going to cost $10 a month, which is $120 a year on top of all the games that you're going to buy, because there's no free games with this, unless you're getting the Founders Edition, which I believe comes with Destiny 2, and a lot of people already have Destiny 2, and... Yeah, if you're appealing to the PC or Xbox, PlayStation 4 community, even the Nintendo Switch community, I mean, this, this really doesn't look good. I think you'd be better off paying for an actual game on Steam or a game on your computer because you're going to have to pay for the service and pay for a game 
and you won't be able to stream it on any other device unless you have like a Chromecast to connect to the TV or a Google Pixel. This is almost absolutely worthless, this service. I know the controller, and the controller too, it's just like kind of, eh, it doesn't really look that good of a controller. Like, the buttons are basically copying Nintendo, and the Founder's Edition looks alright, but it's knowing that the service is completely worthless, just just forget about it if you're thinking about this. Buy some games on Steam, because if they're going to be downloadable, you're going to be playing them better, because even if you don't even have internet at all, they're downloaded games, so you can like play them anywhere, and um, well, if you have like a laptop, but, um, yeah, Nintendo Switch is also better too, since you can actually play the games anywhere with, um, if you, like, download a game, you don't, it doesn't really require internet connection, unless it's an internet-based game, but this Google Stadia is, it's, it's completely worthless, it's not really worth getting, it's, I, um, I thought it was in really gonna be like a thing that could work on any device like a phone and it wouldn't have been that bad if you could run it on an iPhone or Android or stuff like that via some apps but and it would be able to like run on PC better without like a paid service and um, it would be able to run better on like TV or other devices or stuff like that. But this is not really looking good. I, I really am not gonna get this. And please don't get this console or not. This is not a console. It's a game streaming service. But it, it's almost a console. It's not a console, but it's not a console. So yeah, this Google Stadia service is looking horrible. So let's go in. To the last thing we have, new Pokemon Sword and Shield info. This game is looking really cool with its um, larger open world aspect to it, with the actual large world as you can move the camera. The Dynamax feature is looking pretty cool. I like that feature about Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's a nice new mode. And also the multiplayer mode, which you can connect online and locally. I don't really have a problem with that, it's kind of like adding the functions of Nintendo Switch Online, which is good, and it, it's pretty cool. The game, I like the game, I like all the new Pokemon in this game, and I'm looking forward to it. It's it's looking much better than I intention originally, initially thought of this game. So, yeah, that's about it for the news today. Thank you guys for watching this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Goodbye.